Right then, guys. Uh, this is just a, a very brief overlook of Navionics. Um, so you're looking for Navionics boat in. Uh, it's the top left logo in this box. Navionics boat in. That's the logo you're looking for in the App Store. Um, we'll start off in the menu, shall we? So that's that's the menu. Um, at the top, this is your details, your profile picture, your name, about your boat, um, what type of boat it is. You can fill in the length of your boat, the beam of your boat, um, the draft of your boat. I haven't amended mine from the 365 we had. Um, you can put in your cruising speed, your fuel consumption, um, and then when you plan a route, it should work out uh, how long it'll take you and roughly how much fuel you're going to use. Um, but they do say that it, it isn't. this isn't to be used as a, a primary navigation tool. Um, I generally, I suppose on the dinghy, we use it for finding fishing marks, um, saving fishing marks, and yeah, keeping in contact with each other basically. Um, so you got account, subscription expires, etc., etc. Um, second box down there, that's my live GPS location now. Um, if you click on share live location, um, and then you click to confirm share live location. It will call up a list of your contacts if you have any. Um, so I can choose there to share my location with Chris, uh, with Gareth. Um, and then and you press send. So then there is sharing my live location with one connection. That one connection being Chris. Um, I'm sure that Chris will screenshot because he will get a notification. I'm sure he'll screenshot me. I share in my live location and then you'll be able to see what it looks like. Um, to finish that, you just press stop. That function is super handy. Uh, if you're out in fog or if you don't go out in fog and the fog comes in, and uh, if you get disorientated, you can share your live location with the group of dinghies you're out with and yeah, you should be able to um, get found or find your way back to the people you're fishing with. Um, so this setting at the moment is set on relief shading. Um, that is satellite, uh, shows you more more detail on the land but we use relief shading because the detail it shows you is yeah cracking um so marker boys if you hover over and press on it'll give you information about that boy um So that ring logo there, that's saying there's an obstruction. If you click on the question mark, there's a, some information, not a lot, mind. Um, there's the information regarding that obstruction. You can see all the little white lines. Uh, they're called contour lines. Um, if you can see... Less than no metres of water there, so that area of the ground will dry out. Um, but as you come down, it's dropping off fairly steep there, into six, six and a half. So there's a bit of a gully there. The tighter them lines are together, the steeper the bank. Um, like I say, it is only a brief overview of the features that I use. Um... Somebody's left a fishing mark there. Um, yeah, it might be all right to fish here, I suppose. On the bottom of a bit of a gully. Um, blue arrows. 
not to be confused with the rectangle box. They are different. So the blue arrow, it can also be a red arrow. Um, that's flow direction and rate of flow then or flow speed of the tide. So the tide in Newport at the moment is ebbing or going out. Um, 2.1 knots. So when the arrow's red, it'll be flooding. You can see there, top of the tide, it'll be flooding in at three knots. So that's flow direction and flow speed. And there's details there. Um, just, just a little one there. Um, rugby ball with a bit of a H pattern in the middle of them. That shows a rack. Again, if you click on, give you a little bit of information about the rack. Um, it's for the rectangle box now. So that is actually your state of tide. So whether you're flooding or ebbing. And it'll be the size of the tide. So... So the next, the next high tide is at 11.31 and I'm saying it's 10.74 10 metres. So a blue arrow, a blue arrow is flooding and... A red arrow or a red box is ebbing and you can see there different states of the tide you it swaps the arrow the black arrow goes to the top of the box so the box is filling up and then the black arrow box drops to the bottom and the colors draining out so that's an ebbing tide um, we did touch briefly on um, marker boys I believe that's called a cardinal marker boy click on give you information about the boy um, what boy it is what it means and uh, yeah just give you some information so you, you can identify it in the dark by the, the flashing light it also it also gives you details of the seabed you're fishing over. So for instance, we've got an M there. So that's showing you the seabed is mud. Let's see if we can find any other seabed markers can we find any there you go Sorry, seabed, sand. So somebody's left a marker there saying um, there's an obstruction. Again there, seabed there, sand, um, ST there, stone or stones. Gravel, but that's coming out of Panath. Stone, sand, sand. 
more information on the marker boys. Um, but yeah, the information it gives you is cracking. There you go. That's Castle Rock, just uh, just by Barry. And it shows you no meters of water. So that will be exposed on a low tide. All these measurements of water, which is the top white box you can see there changing. They're all taken on um, low water. And I believe they're taken on a big tide. So that is the that's the lowest that that water will be this. So if it says there'll be six meters there, the lowest that will be is six meters ish. Um there you go, sand there. And then it goes up in the mud there in the old Bally Harbour. You see the detail there of a pipeline. Bit of information about the marker boy there. Welsh Water Barry West. There you are. Clay on the seabed. Another boy there with information. Now see the darker the darker the blue colour gets, the deeper the water is. So you can see there it drops from from 12 meters down to 30 odd meters there so that's fairly deep that is a shipping lane um, markers if you see somewhere you want to fish or somewhere you've caught fish um, Press a question mark and leave a marker. There you go. There's your marker. Marker five. So next time you come out, you can click marker five, boat two, and then she'll create a route then to your marker. Um, if you was heading out on a on a night trip or an evening trip, and you was a bit uh, a bit worried about maybe finding your way back, if you was going out and it was light, and you was going to be coming back and it'd be dark before you start your journey. If you click the start button, that will record your journey, and it'll leave a trail on the on the on the map. Of where you've been so in theory you should be able to follow the line back to where you came from um, and to be honest that is about all I use Navionics for but uh, you see some of the some of the detail there's another handy to our tidal stream there. Sometimes that I'll say um, turbulent water, so you can um, gravel on a seabed there. And then just across from it, not too far away. Changes to rock. There you go. Water turbulence, overfalls created by them sandbanks. So, be great fishing in there. You see how steep, how steep the contour lines are. I'd say there'd be some good fishing in there, but you know it's going to get quite choppy. Um, somebody's mark there 
seeing that they've caught cod. Um, yeah, you can download. So you see the highlighted area of the map there. That's what I've downloaded. Um, but you can download any area that you want to go fishing. Once you've downloaded that map, um, the app works offline then. You don't need to have internet connection. You can run it on a iPhone. You can run it on an Android phone. You can run it on an iPad or an Android tablet. I know you must be thinking, well, how am I going to hold an iPad or how am I going to hold a tablet? Well, Railblazer, they actually do mounts for tablets and they click in, they're locked in, the very same as the rod holders, and you can put your tablet in there. It's a it's a very cheap way of getting um, a chart plotter. Very, very cheap way. I think it's 35 quid maybe for the year. Um, it's nothing. Really is nothing for the amount of information you get. There you go. There's another cardinal boy there. Them contour lines. Go some seven meters. Down to 25 meter holes. And back up. Gullies between them. Adjust. There's a another thing worth noting there. Uh, firing, firing practice area. So there's uh yeah, there's a wealth of information on there that will cost you. I think it's thirty five quid a year. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop waffling on now. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.